Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Lara May, a clinical pharmacist specializing in functional medicine, as well as a certified yoga teacher and Reiki master. I run a truly integrative health coaching practice, encompassing functional medicine lab testing, yoga and meditation, and a sprinkling of Reiki energy medicine. Join me here on Light Body Radio to break through your health plateau and come into alignment with your natural vitality. Hello and welcome to Light Body Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Lara May, and today we have with us Tahila Aloni. Sorry. (laughs) She is a multifaceted entrepreneur weaving together a unique blend of experiences in business, wellness, and personal development. As a CEO of an access control company, a former Israeli national judo champion training alongside Olympic medalists, and an IDF Boost Camp instructor, her drive, ambition, and leadership skills have been honed to empower and inspire others. In her transformative work as a homeopath, an extrasensory business consultant, and founder of Bio Organi Organomy. <laughs> <laughs> for business, Tahila synergizes her extensive knowledge of Kabbalah, spiritual practices, NLP, and internal martial arts, offering a holistic approach that nurtures both personal well being and business success. Guided by her passion for helping others, she assists clients in tapping into their higher selves, aligning their personal wellness with business prosperity, and breaking consciousness and subconscious patterns holding them back. Welcome. This is going to be a really interesting conversation, I think. Being at Dr. Lara, man, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. So tell us about how you got started. It sounds like you've had many paths throughout your life and it's you're bringing them all together for your unique approach. But tell us a little bit more about your story and what brought you to this point. You see, the way I see it, each of us, each one, each one of us has, has a soul, obviously, and our soul has its journey and its purpose and our lives, including its challenges and everything that we beat through is actually there in order for us to develop our unique skill set and bring our special and unique light into this world. So the way I look at my, at my life in hindsight, obviously 2020 hindsight, <laughs> mm-hmm. so I, I can see um, how how anything has been, uh, I've been through has actually brought me to this point today. So um, at the very young age, about the age of six, I'd started the uh, training doing judo, which is a martial art, and uh, I became a national judo champion. I was the then on the national judo team, and that developed in the resilience, uh, self discipline, and many positive traits. However, it also made me a very selfish person because in one C I I've noticed that uh, in individual sports you are always focused on yourself since you're the individual and you always had we strive to be number one and it's a zero sum game. So it makes it makes it made me at least very self centered and selfish. And at some point I injured my knee and I had to I had to pick Dean Gido because a huge part of my identity it was at the age of eighteen after I'd been training for thirteen years. And uh, then I, I became a boot camp instructor in the Israeli army. Now I was a boot camp instructor in the Israeli army for male recruits from difficult backgrounds. The army actually gives them a second chance. Uh, and it's a special program. And that actually forced me to make the slip from being someone who's very self-centered and very, very selfish to someone who's in a position where I have to give my all for these soldiers and they're totally unappreciative. <laughs> I still have, <laughs> but I keep on, you know, but I have to continue, continue giving and giving and giving much more than, you know, what I, was my capacity. It's, I, I remember sleeping for four hours a night and just being with them constantly all the time to work. Everybody understands instead of being six commanders, um, we got two because uh, we, I just got into 
into the position when after one of the soldiers had committed suicide. So it was a very, very difficult position to be in. But that enabled me to, to flip, to make that flip. It was very painful and very intense, but I could do the flip very quickly in such some circumstances. So I'm very happy that it happened. Wow, that sounds really intense. Um, so tell us more about your unique approach to how you um, incorporate all these different modalities into your business consulting. The way I, the way I've I've seen it over the years, and the way I, I it's, it's based on my spiritual studies and my experience, especially in small businesses, in order for the business to to thrive, the owner has to thrive. Okay, the the business is spiritual is like an extension of the owner, and it's a reflection of the owner. And you know, for most of us, our a small businesses, our business is our baby. <laughs> I know when our baby is being, oh, we're doing well. I mean, mm-hmm. well, the baby does well. However, it's also mutual. If, you know, one of us is down, <laughs> we bring the other one down with us. So the way I see it, in order for the, the business to slide, it has to first talk and focus on the owner. It's a holistic approach. I, when I, I usually work with women because uh, I think it's, you know, I enjoy working with women much more and uh, and I find them much more open to this kind of work. And so when I work with a business owner, first of all, I give her only a passive remedy in order to 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 for her to to already I want to see an improvement in her in her physical well being, in her emotional well being, in the net in her mental well being. And that homeopathic remedy also helps her align with abundance and connects connect her to a power source or own source of resources. And once that's done, I start working on the business with my extrasensory business consulting ability. And what all does that entail? That extra, the extrasensory part. Yeah. Okay. So I use a technique called biorbonin, which allows me to this. It, it's an extrasensory technique which allows me to perceive and also influence the subject that I'm focusing on. So according to Bayer Gordon, every thing has energy fields which nurture and support it. So whether it's a person, an animal, a plant, a business, a relationship, bank account, everything has these energy fields. And once these energy fields are disrupted, that's when you start seeing problems. You start seeing illnesses, if it's a person, if it's a living thing. Or you see, you know, that the business who starts seeing problems, the the cash flow, the the you know, it's the, things just don't do well because it doesn't get that basic spiritual knowledge. Look, so what I do using biogonomy, first of all, I diagnose the energy fields of all the team stakeholders, I call it in the business, and then if if they need to be repaired, I repair these energy fields. Then if there's certain issues that need to be addressed, we address these issues. For example. There was this one I was going to work, and she came, she came to me and she and both agreed that she had a very good business idea. The product was excellent, but for some reason she didn't understand why she wasn't making any money, why it wasn't succeeding. And then when I checked to see whether all interests of all the key stakeholders were aligned, we noticed that her husband subconsciously, so we I saw in using the biogonomy that subconsciously her husband didn't want her to earn more than he was. <laughs> and, uh, so his subconscious um, fear of, you know, or being intimidated by her being the main breadwinner in the family was actually sabotaging her earnings. Mm. So what we did was, first of all, I cleaned it up energetically, and then we, we basically decided on the fact that she would actually make him feel that he was a part of the business, and that the business, the success of the business was also his success. And once there was the, his interests and her interests and the interests of the business were aligned, then we saw, saw that money was coming in. Because what I noticed is that in order to to have abundance flow into the life, you have to send a coherent message to your universe. And if you have either you or people that are close to you or your employees, or not sending the same message that you're sending when there's this conflict, then that's when you don't manifest that bandage that you can be manifesting. 
Mm, that's so interesting. Yeah. Um, cause really, I mean, as I think in the Western world too, we see our, our personal health and wellness is separate from our personal success in life, but really they're one and the same, right? You see success, uh, success and health, like people think health is maybe a lack of physical symptoms, but health is a consciousness. It's a mindset. It's a totality. It's, it's, uh, it's, I, I don't think it's correct to separate between them, to have a fragmented approach to health. The more holistic the approach is, you manage to come from a higher place and to have a larger impact. Yeah. So how does our higher selves tap into all of this or factor in? Well, you see, the whole idea of, of I, I, I do get it local, okay? Uh, what I've known, I've been, I've been in the field of counseling for for more than twenty years, and I've noticed no one, no no matter who I've spoken to, everyone wants the same four things. Okay, everyone wants to be healthy. Everyone wants to be loved, appreciated, and valued. Everyone wants money. And if you're a woman above forty, most likely you also want to be weight. <laughs> <laughs> now the thing is that you know when I say everyone it's 99% okay mm -hmm. now the thing is that most people take the exact wrong approach in order to achieve these goals okay when it comes to health people take meditation which usually only addresses the symptom and not the underlying reason for the problem and also creates dependency the dependencies are side effects when it comes to being loved and valued, most people have like a victim mindset and they keep on blaming other people from, for their problems and then they develop toxic relationships instead of working on their self-development. When it comes to money, in Israel we have a saying that if you work too hard, you don't have time to make money. Okay. No, I like that. <laughs> so most people are, are too busy with the baby, so blind, and they don't lift their head, you know, just to think out of the box and to, you know, think strategically about their income and increasing their income. And when it comes to to weight loss, well, that actually goes about saying, you know, everyone knows the yo-yo diet, then you go up, you go down, and then slowly you stop going down and you go more up, <laughs> and the metabolism slows down. And your self-esteem goes down, uh, and levels of frustration and anger just rise. Mm -hmm. so, your your diets are. I've also proven not to be the answer. And I always I always describe this. I always tell the story about this garden. Like imagine a beautiful garden in uh, ancient D in old Jerusalem, which has the, the most lovely trees and flowers and birds and beans. And everyone who just walks next to the garden just stops in order to enjoy the fragrances coming from the lemon tree and the orange tree. And then one day, the owner who loves his gardens, the apple of his eye, starts noticing that there are no more birds, no more bees, and the trees are dying, the flowers are bleeding, and he start, he's, he's panicking. He starts, you know, shooting in all directions, <laughs> like that, saying he will try to find getting experts from here from there. So he's got an expert for the glass. Puts horse manure all over his garden. And uh -huh. now that turned out. And then the tree expert, you start building supports for the trees. And you can imagine what that looks like. And then someone's putting, you know, uh, water with sugar all around the garden to stop trying to grow the bees. And nothing's really working, but the garden just keeps on deteriorating. Until one day, his friend, friend, friend comes over and he's got this little boy of five and they're walking around the garden trying not to step on the boss manure. <laughs> yeah. The boy points out and says, Father, what's that there in the corner? And they see that the water pipe, which was supposed to bring the water to the garden, was broken. Then they see little old gardens and you all need to be connected to the salt, to the water. And that's what I do. Once you've connected it, I use well, the opposite. I use Baragani. Once you connect it to the source, then water flows and whatever needs to grow in the garden just grows. The garden will flourish. Once it gets enough water, that's the basic need. So most people, instead of 
Like they take this fragment of the boat and they try, you know, fixing these different things in the garden instead of treating the underlying cause going to the soul. So that's that's my key approach, and I, and I see amazing results. Awesome. Well, tell us um, if you can maybe give us an example of how the bio origami um, is used to diagnose and optimize a client's business. That sounds really interesting. So the first thing I do is I check key elements in the business, like using biogonomy. So first of all, I make sure that the client has 100% energy fields, that the emotional heart has 100% energy field, the emotional brain has 100% energy field. I can also go, if, if there's specific problems with specific symptoms, I also check the energy field. Once I do that, I check the business, I check the bank accounts, I check key elements in the business, whether it's sales, cash flow, management, uh, the atom steel, and I make sure that all these different elements have a 100% energy field. And if there are issues, then you look into these specific issues as in why, why things aren't moving. Just like I gave the example with that woman that we had the husband, uh, you know, who was subconsciously sabotaging the atom. And once I do that, once we have basically this foundation in place, you know, all elements have a 100% energy field, that's when we use bioergonomy for extra insight. And in order to make sure that all interests of all the stakeholders are aligned, like I described before. Because, for example, women, especially mothers, they have, you know, they might have like a conflict between they want the business to succeed. On the other hand, they're feeling guilty because they're not giving enough time to the children. They're not spending enough time to the children. So again, they're sending a com- conflicting message to the universe. So we want to make sure that all goals are alive in order to send a coherent message to the universe. So we consciously want to work to define these goals and make sure that that there's nothing holding us back, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, in order to get that clear, defined message out to the universe. Once we do that, we use biogonomy for the extra insight. You know, as a business owner, you're constantly having to make decisions. Whether to work with this person or with that person, whether to use this strategy or that strategy, whether to use to offer this proposal to the to the client or to offer a different t- proposal to the client, you're constantly having to make decisions, and this is where the biogonomy's extra insight comes in. So I can I have, for example, um, a woman in uh, in Africa where she was working, and one of the employees was heavily embezzling on you know, in a company and didn't know exactly who, she didn't know who that was. And I just went over the names of the different employees and then figured that, you know, I pointed the, her out the you know, who it could be and then she checked it out and she verified that. So there are, you know, only, I have the women in small community and saying I've got for the, the position of manager, I have like five options people that I can hire, who should I hire? And then I just check out the, you know, the five options that I tell her who seems to be the best and what are his strengths and what are his weaknesses and what she you know, needs to prepare herself and focus on. Oh, okay. That sounds really cool. Um, so how do the practices of Kabbalah and internal martial arts work and come into this equation? In, according to Kabbalah, one of the basic premises of Kabbalah our ideas is that there's the light and there's a vessel. So we want to work on the vessel because the stronger and purer and larger the vessel is, the more light it can contain. And the more light it can contain, it means that the more light it can also be into the world. So when we work on our self-development and on our lifestyle and habits and we, we, we lead a healthy healthy life, including, and we have healthy spiritual practices, that strengthens the vessel. And then you can actually bring more light into this boat. And in ter- internal marks of arts, arts is a great way to us of strengthen the vessel. Yeah, so I think yeah. it's important for all of us to like really sort of take a step back and, you know, we can only I sort of talk about this, you know, a fair amount too, is like you can only really pour from a cup that's full. 
Um, you know, you can't eventually if you pour, if you keep pouring from the cup and it doesn't get replenished, then it's going to be empty and you have nothing else left to give. Right. So I think, yeah, it's really important for us all to take a step back and say, like, what are we doing to strengthen ourselves, to replenish ourselves in all these aspects that you're, that you're speaking of spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically, all of the ways, because I completely agree with you. Like, this is what creates the like you said like the message that you're putting out to the universe it needs to be you know um a consistent message you know what you put out is what you get back right so yeah it's super important i, I totally agree and and the whole thing is that some it's, it's a fundamental understanding that you 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 have to be in tune with yourself and be very attentive your needs because especially as a woman we tend to be there for everyone else and not for ourselves and you know spread out the, ourselves too sunny and and it's so important to 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 take care of our well-being and give ourselves time and new permission to rejuvenate and and rest when we need to be not yet and to do things in a way that that doesn't trample around our, our inner being because some people just have a tendency to do that. They completely disregard their, their personal needs and they just sort of like go for on for the business, for on for the family, for on for the kids. And in the meantime, they're depleting their, 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 their themselves. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us um, about a time or show us, uh, maybe give us an example of of how you help your um, help your clients break those subconscious patterns that are really inhibiting their success. Well, you see, I, what I love about homeopathy <laughs> is that it's completely effortless. Okay, so once you take the whole the the, the difficult part of homeopathy is actually getting the remedy that there's, there's like something like five thousand or six thousand on the packet remedies. Okay, made from all these different substances, and the whole idea is that you want to we want to match one remedy to the entirety of an individual person. Meaning that in order to to give a good remedy to someone, you have to take into account all their physical, mental, and emotional symptoms from the present and from their past, their life story, their surroundings, their likes, desires, and aversions. And once you have the totality of that picture, you have to find a remedy that fits like a glove to to the to to the entire story and pattern because we most of us all of us actually operate on patterns now some of these patterns are good and some of these patterns are detrimental for our growth and what you hear personal story the I'd say it takes a bit of expertise but as you practice and you 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 evolve you be able I I'd say I'm able to identify these patterns and give a homeopathic remedy which connects them like i said to the walls or to the source and then whatever needs to be taken care of gets taken care of really i i don't come with an agenda i don't say okay i'm going to give you a remedy for i'd say for for new snow metabolism or for the the rash you have on the back of your hand or the for the the, the difficulties you have in the digestion no I don't treat the symptoms, I treat the person. So so that's the idea. Once you treat the person, that's when you see the the huge changes happen because you're connecting them to the soul. Mm. Yeah, I love that. Um, yeah, that's so fascinating and so powerful too, right? It must yeah, be amazing to watch these transformations. He's amazing because all they have to do is take a homeopathic remedy. Once you take the homeopathic remedy, you see, when a person is healthy, his desires and his needs are aligned. Meaning, you 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 say you showed him magnesium, you'd want to eat a banana, okay, which is which is potassium, magnesium, or you 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 naturally your natural desires are according in accordance with your needs. However. When a person is unhealthy, then his desires are almost the opposite of his needs. Like, for example, people that want to smoke or are addicted to 
to to to grants the people that that diabetics who want to consume sugar. So once a person is healthier, their desires are aligned with their needs, and these aren't just food cravings. It's I see this also in the work they do. So people will change their career, they will change and make changes in their lifestyle, not because someone told them to do it, but because naturally the homeopathic remedy has made them healthier. So they naturally they make they, they make the shift. They don't have to force themselves to do exercise. Because the healthier they are, they're already naturally inclined to the exercise. So people are telling me, listen, for 20 years I've been trying to you know, to stick to a certain diet or to exercise regularly. And now I just do it and it's easy for me to do it. So that's what happens when, when people are healthy. And that's why I love it. Because like I said, it's effortless. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's wonderful. So um, what are some of the tools? Do you use some of these same tools for yourself personally? Like you're a CEO, you're a homeopath, you wear a lot of hats. Sounds like you're, you know, doing a lot of amazing things. So how do you keep your inner self strong and, and filled, fulfilled? So, well, first of all, I always say I, I, I do love you, obviously, and I give the biogarden in myself. And and I I do what I, I exercise, I focus on my nutrition, I focus on my health, and I, I also am constantly studying spirituality and working on my personal development. That's been my project almost since the age of 20, my main focus is my personal development, my personal spiritual development. And that's the way I also treat my family because everything starts from the spiritual. The material world is just a condensation of the frequency that starts in the spiritual and comes down to the material. So it's like someone told me, it's not the dog that wags the tail. It's not the tail that wags the dog. It's the dog that wags the tail. It's the spiritual world that actually controls the material. So the more impact you want to have on the material world, it starts with the mindset, with the consciousness and the spirituality. And like I said, working on the vessel. Yeah, absolutely. So I completely agree with you. So what advice would you give to business owners who are currently facing challenges or struggling within their business? Well, first of all, I think you should, so you think you should be very on, honest with yourself, with yourself. And if you need help, take help. And, but also make sure that, that your needs and desires are aligned, that your goal, the goals of the business don't clash with your personal goals. I mean, the goals of your family, just make sure that everything's aligned so you don't have internal conflicts because internal conflicts will also make you waste so much energy in addition to not sending a coherent message to the world. So it's making sure that your personal goals, the goals of your business are aligned and all the goals of the people that are close to you, whether it's members of the family, people that are, that you work with on a daily basis. So that's one thing that's very important. And the second thing, I think it's very important to, to listen to your intuition. At the end of the day, if we're totally honest with ourselves, we have the answers within us. In, in most cases, at least, or at least, you know, we have the, we can say we have the end of the, the end of the rope. So you start, you catch the end of the rope and you slowly start pulling. And the more you listen to your intuition, the more you pull the rope and the more will be revealed to you. Yes, yes. I love it. I love it. So good. Okay, so tell people where they can find you. Well, um, I have my website. It's called bioforbiz.com. It's spelled B-I-O, the number four, B-I-Z dot com, bioforbiz.com. And then there's social media, which I... I, I'm, I'm less, I used to be less focused on it, but now I'm reaching out more. I'm there's teaching La Lodi on LinkedIn. There's my recent Facebook, Ira Lodi, and Instagram, which I'm trying to figure out what's going on there. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today. This has been such a pleasure and I think so insightful. And so, if any of you out there are struggling uh, with your success or your business, definitely reach out to Tahila. Um, it sounds like she has brought together a 
magical combination of modalities to really help people create success, both with their health and their business, which really, again, you know, you can't, I don't really think, you know, carve out just one area, like true success is holistic, just like our health is holistic. So they, they're, they can't, they are interlinked. Um, so yeah, so thank you so much. Any last words before we finish up? I started with the, what I said about the journey of the soul and our, our calling in life. And I think at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. You know, we're here for a reason. We've got a mission, each of us. And it is our, I'd say, the, our duty to to pursue our call and voca- our vocation and calling in life. And the quicker we do it, I think it's, uh, it'd be, I think also pain is, if we experience pain, it's usually because we're not in align with our soul. So, quicker we, we become alive with our soul, the less pain we will be. Yes, yes. Everything sort of falls into place when we make that connection and keep that alignment. So for sure, I completely agree. Well, again, thank you so much for being on the show. And um, definitely everyone check out her website and uh, go find her on social media too. So, it's been a little pleasure. Yes, thank you. Okay, bye everybody. We'll catch you on the next episode. Good evening.